All right, can everyone see a gray rectangle? Nothing yet, oh, now we have it. Yeah. Okay. So this is sort of an interpretation of different lab processes that we do. Um, and we're just making something that's sort of nonsensical, but it demonstrates all the lab equipment that we use. So first off, a little background about me. Um, I've worked for Wish Art Lab for a while, work on a bunch of different things, problem solving, mechanical problems, fixing machines. Um, born and raised in Edmonton. Uh, and my background is in animation, which isn't that relevant, but there is a surprising amount of crossover with what I do now. All right. So in this presentation, I'm gonna go over five different materials that we use in the lab and five of the machines that we use. It isn't comprehensive. There are many other pieces of equipment and other materials that we use. So the first process that we're gonna talk about is CNC machining. Um, CNC machining dates back to the 40s or 50s. It's a subtractive manufacturing process. So the material is cut away from uh, a stock piece that is larger. So in the top right, you can see an example of a cut that I made, and that's the bread of our sandwich. So CNC allows for very high precision in cutting out 2D and sort of 2.5D. Um, 2.5D in the sense that you're limited to what you can cut from the top down. So it can cut uh, a hemisphere from the top, but it can't cut underneath that. Uh, and that's one of the restrictions of this method. Um, in addition to, it just takes a really long time depending on what it is. Um, so for the material, uh, we use expanded polystyrene or XPS foam. This is primarily used in housing insulation uh, or other commercial buildings. Uh, it's incredibly common. It's very, very good at insulating. Uh, it's very light, easy to work with, easy to machine, but it is difficult to keep in the same shape after machining if there are impacts or anything like that. You can see a mark on the top right of the piece of bread from where the machine hit it, and it's that easily damaged. Additionally, uh, it's foam, so environmentally it's very difficult to recycle. Uh, and the process by which we cut this is we prepare the files. I designed them in Fusion, and you can see that in the bottom left. And then those files are then exported and sent to a proprietary program that this CNC, the Shape 3, then reads, interprets, and cuts out. You can see that on the bottom right. Uh, all right. The next process is the manufacturing of stickers. So this one is more of an artistic interpretation. It's not actual. It's not supposed to actually look like lettuce. It's sort of the idea of lettuce, and you can see on the top right. So we use a machine called a cutting plotter. And these function similarly to CNC in that they interpret positional code and cut something out accordingly. It's very useful for very thin, flat objects where you need high precision. Um, however, there are limitations to what material you can cut out. For example, we can't cut filter paper on them because it's just two fibers of a material. Um, and with the sticker paper, um, well, the stuff we use has a variety of different applications. So far, we've essentially just been making stickers for metabolomics boxes packaging, which just showed up in the top right, um, as well as making other PPE signs that are posted around the lab. Um, sticker paper is pretty sensitive to wear and tear because it's just inkjet printer paper with an adhesive backing, but we coat it with vinyl and that makes it significantly more resilient to just uh, impacts or scratches or anything. It is a very simple process. It's easy to do, but it's difficult to get it 
perfect, let's say. So it's, it's very difficult to not trap bubbles under the vinyl or to apply the sticker correctly. So there, there's some kind of finicky things with that. Um, and this is how we cut it up. So we use what's called a Silhouette Cameo 4. I designed the files in Adobe Illustrator. This is a royalty-free picture of lettuce that I took and then just converted to what you see on the right being cut out. And relatively simple process when the machine is working properly. Um, and very repeatable, very accurate edges. You can see how rough of an edge it is, and it, it cuts everything very accurately to that edge. The next process is laser cutting. And we're laser cutting acrylic in this case. So this is also a subtractive manufacturing method. Um, but instead of a bit or a blade cutting the material, the laser is blasting through the material and actually vaporizing. So this can be very accurate and precise for repeatability of manufacturing parts. There's very little material wastage, uh, except for just scrap parts. Oh, that's an, another note. Everything that I used in this presentation is all just scrap material we had, except for the sticker. Um, and the laser cutter can cut the majority of flat materials, excluding some metals that are too reflective. However, it is limited to 2D shapes because it just moves in the XY plane and cuts up those shapes. And in addition, the laser can actually burn or warp parts if the settings aren't dialed in properly. So the material that we've cut on the laser cutter primarily has been acrylic. Acrylic has widespread use in medical, automotive, architectural. There are a lot of different fields that use this plastic uh, because it is quite stable and quite durable. We use it for rapid prototyping, uh, just of small parts like you see in the top right. That's one of uh, the clamping plates for our auto punch machine. And we prototype those all in acrylic before we made them actually out of aluminum due to the time difference between the two. Um, as I said before, acrylic, well, this acrylic isn't transparent, but some is. Uh, it's incredibly strong and it's very easy to work with as a material. However, as it is a plastic, it can crack quite easily. It's quite expensive and it degrades in UV. So the way that we cut it, as I said before, is using a laser engraver. So we use an Omtech MF202880 CO2 laser. The files are designed in Fusion 360 or Illustrator. They're then exported to a program called Lightburn, which is just uh, a laser engraver software, essentially, and then loaded onto the machine and cut out like you see here. The fourth process is 3D printing. Normally I would say 3D printing is our bread and butter, but in this specific case, it is baloney. So 3D printers, like everything else that's been mentioned, very similar to CNC. However, they manufacture by adding plastic layer by layer. As a result of this, you can create overhangs, you can create um, complex geometries that wouldn't be able to be created and, uh, unless you had a CNC with a fifth, a fourth or fifth axis. 3D printing can produce complex geometry quickly. We use it for prototyping almost everything because you can ideate, create something, and then have it printing within the hour. And there is very little to no material waste. Um, some of the cons of it, you're sort of limited to what plastic you can use. Um, however, there are a lot. And if you're trying to manufacture something significantly larger, that print time then scales to, to match that. Uh, in addition, it leaves the surface rough 
I don't know if you can see the background of the slide, but that's sort of the texture that it's left with, um, striated. Uh, and a lot of the time, if you do want it to be smooth, you need to post-process. So either sanding or dissolve it in some way. So the main plastic that we prototype with is polyethylene terephthalate glycol, or PETG. It's a widely used material, uh, mostly used in packaging. Uh, I believe the majority of drinking bottles and sh shampoo bottles and that kind of thing are all made out of PETG, um, as well as a lot of medical equipment and other applications. We primarily use it um, because it has very good strength while also not being brittle. Um, I guess it's also chemical resistant as well. So for applications where that's needed, probably 3D printing isn't the best because it will leave voids. Um, and some of the cons for 3D printing with PETG is that it can be more finicky to get it to print as well as other plastics would. Uh, in addition, slower print speeds compared to PLA, which is polylactic acid. And that's just a very, very general 3D printing plastic that's easy to use. PETG is more difficult to use, but it's a lot better when you get it right. So the process for 3D printing is sort of similar to the other ones. Um, this printer is a printer that I built. It's called the Voron 2.4 Revision 2. It's an open source 3D printer. We ordered all the parts and then built it. And it outperforms, I think, all of our other printers by a factor of two. I designed the files in Fusion 360 again, uh, and then prepare those files for the printer using a slicer called Super Slicer. And all that a slicer does is just take a 3D model and cut it into layers, and then turn those layers into positional information the printer can understand. And you can see the object being printed on the right. So the fifth and final material, we're going back to CNC machining, because we have two of them. Uh, and I've cut aluminum. So we have our larger Shefoko CNC that I use to cut foam, and we have our smaller uh, CanCam CNC, and that one is more precise and has stronger connections in the joints, so it's more rigid. Um, aluminum is an incredibly versatile material used in transportation, planes, cars, that kind of thing. Marine applications, because it's incredibly cor corrosion resistant. Medical applications. Uh, and a lot of other things. Uh, it's a lightweight, strong, and durable metal. And its high thermal conductivity can be a benefit uh, when it's used as heat sinks in a lot of electronics, but it can also be a negative in situations where you are trying to limit that. Um, additionally, aluminum is on the cheaper end of some metals, but compared to things like brass or other super cheap alloys, um, it is marginally more expensive. And even though it is quite strong, um, it is still prone to scratching and damages quite easily. So the process for this is similar, it just, wasn't as easy to film. So we use a CanCam D11 Minitron CNC, and there, oh, it just took a second to appear. Uh, that's on the right, and you can see uh, it does lose the leftmost one at one point, and I don't know where that went, it flew off somewhere. I designed these pickles, in quotes, in Illustrator, and then prepared those to be cut using Fusion 360. So you can see me preparing them on the left and then the CNC cutting them out on the right. Uh, all right. So in conclusion, we have 
many different materials that we can manufacture stuff with. And there are many that I, I didn't cover. We have a lot of other printers. I tried to just count them in my head, but it would take too long. Uh, and a lot of different materials that we can print with as well. Um, so this is the finished product. This is the sandwich. And that is it.